use the CCM standards by coordination and monitoring the safety in the safe monitoring protection assistance framework in humanitarian standards through community governance and we also established complaint fin mechanism so IDBs can raise their concerns and complaints. It makes a difference these standards help us then for the IDBs to raise their voices and have a platform they can raise their concerns and have a full participation in uh, the ongoing activities and it help trust build a trust between the uh, organizations and the ADBs. This is Travis Lyon, the Site Management and Site Development Sector Co-Lead in Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh. We've just recently completed a series of contextualization workshops to adapt the minimum standards for camp management to this response, which like all others, is quite unique. It's hoped that adapting the standards to this context will help us better measure the overall quality of SMS, which is known as camp management by most of us, and to help us uh, work to advocate to address unmet standards, and also to inform the base of a monitoring framework for the eventual handover of camp management to the government of Bangladesh. Hello from Cox's Buzzer. I am Flores Munmun Boyagi, working with IOM Site Management as a Senior Site Management Assistant in Capacity Building Team as WPP Focal. I have been working with IOM Site Management since 2017, right after the influx. It's a great opportunity for me to see the changes over the years in the camps. Before I was supporting camp manager in camp, working in three key pillars of site management, which is communication with communities, camp operation, and community engagement. Global standards ensure that the site management or CCM can advocate and strongly promote it to the camp leadership headed by government camp in church, and then the community leaders, including imams, majis, who are mostly male-dominated. Site management agencies can use this as an advocacy tool, at the same time as an accountability tool wherein SMA will be guided from inception and designing of the project to ensure the meaningful participation of women, girls and vulnerable groups are top priorities not only in the operations at the field level but also in the overall programming and the capacity development of actors. Hello CCM teams around the world, I'm speaking from Marupa relocation site in the district of Shiuri in the province of Cabo Delgado in northern Mozambique. Due to insecurity issues, we're facing the displacement of nearly 700,000 people. Uh, we've identified over 50 sites in the region and our team works daily to ensure standard 4.2 where services are coordinated to meet the needs of both displaced and host populations. We map all stakeholders and we maintain open communication and coordination channels. We identify gaps in the service provision and we look for relevant partners who can support the implementation of the sphere minimum standards. Quarterly, the team sits down and reflects on the implementation of the camp management standards, which helps us understand our points for improvement in the CCM response. The development of minimum standards for camp management has certainly been fundamental in facilitating many parts of the work that I do. As a global CCCM cluster coordinator, one of my key tasks and responsibilities is to raise awareness and share information about what Camp Management Agency is and does and how it relates to other actors working to respond to a displacement crisis. The structure of the standards allow for easy adaptation from doing a five minutes overview of CCCM to having a more detailed discussions on specific components. The standards has certainly become one of our key tools for communication and advocacy for the sector. ASB teams practice coordination meetings with the community every month. So this tool helps maintain transparent communication and coordination channels with the hosted community, but also with the national authorities and other actors present. ASB protection teams make sure on a daily basis that protection risks are minimized and that the response to a potential situation is immediate and to the best possible standard. The protection team's action is based on standard referral pathways, clear humanitarian policies with involvement of the health actor and site administration, but also other stakeholders if needed. Special attention is on STBV, GBV, PSEA and child protection. Furthermore, ASB has developed its own child safeguarding and PSEA policies. ASB teams practice coordination meetings with the community every month. This tool helps maintain transparent communication and coordination channels with the hosted community, but also with the national authorities and the other present actors. These meetings help monitor the achievements, make new plans, 
identify new challenges and eventual gaps in the camps. Due to the closing of one site, today we're facilitating the transfer of 111 beneficiaries to three other sites. The beneficiaries were informed about the new destinations, the services, and the time of the transfer. The ASB field team safely facilitated all the procedures in the handling of uh, personal belongings while emptying the rooms and made sure that children and all the residing populations were safe during this process. Hi, I am Hilary Marie and Radioya, a social welfare officer of the Department of Social Welfare and Development of the Government of the Philippines. We view standards as the practical application of human rights. These help us to state actors and primary duty bearers in planning and preparing for disasters. It makes a difference because it ensures accountability and sets a consistent approach in our humanitarian action. Our constituents are also empowered to demand and count on us for quality assistance. Taking into consideration the context of where the response is taking place, it is still important for standards to be applied globally because it reflects the inalienable human rights which are applied universally.